Well, hello there. New Millennium Design here with another video in the series called Before and After, where I'll be showing you render settings for my projects. Today we'll be working with this modern pavilion house with uh, minimalist design. In the top right corner, you can see a couple of links for uh, those of you interested in uh, Lumion speed build of this house with the video render at the end, as well as the SketchUp speed build of the same house. So let's quickly create our base render with no effects applied to it. So we have something to uh, compare it to in our final render. What we're looking for today is a early evening, nice warm uh, shot with a little bit of uh, sun rays streaming uh, into the house. So we'll create a copy of our base render and start applying some effects to it. As always, I'm going to choose all the effects I'll be using for our final render first and then uh, I'll start working on them individually. As I mentioned previously, uh, from my experience you would end up with a different result if you apply effects uh, individually and start uh, editing them right away. Because if you stack them up, they will actually influence uh, each other. So uh, let's uh, select the rest of them. Uh, we're gonna need two point perspective, chromatic aberrations, and obviously sky and clouds, as well as color correction, and the last one, sharpening. Right, okay, let's just double check if we have uh, all of them. Looks like about right. Now, uh, this uh, foggy looking uh, layer is actually the volumetric sunlight. So we'll uh, disable it for now. So it's easier for us to work with the picture. Now, as you can see, we have a pretty strong chromatic aberration from the lens going on in the corners. So let's get rid of that first. Let's move it almost all the way down. You just want to leave only a little bit to make it look realistic. There we are. Let's move on to the sun. As I mentioned uh, in the beginning, we're looking for a nice warm early evening shot. So I want to position the sun somewhere in front of the house, a little bit to the right from where we're standing about two o'clock, somewhere over there. Now, let's bring down the, the height of the sun so we can get those nice long shadows from the trees in uh, front of the house. Somewhere around there. That looks pretty, pretty okay. Moving on to uh, the shadows. Let's turn the soft shadows and fine detail shadows on. You can see the difference right away in the grass or in the trees especially the, the fine detail shadows on the, on the grass as well as the soft shadows from the trees in front of the house. Bring up the Omni shadow so we get a detail in the corners of the house as well as the exterior shadow. Since we are working with the exterior shot, bring down the brightness. You can see now the big difference in between shadow and light and that's what we're looking for in this kind of a early evening shot. Now let's bring down the, where we have the coloring a little down to get a little warmer shadows since the, the light is going to be overall warm the shadows should reflect that. As you can see we lost a little bit of color but we're going to get it back later on in color correction. Moving on to reflections now we only have one uh, glass plane in front of the house as you can see so one layer is enough turn that on speedway reflections on and we're done with the reflections moving on to skylight we want to bring the brightness uh, down as well as the saturation just a little bit and turn on the planar and projected reflections and render quality high. 
that's it, we're done with that. Moving on to, to Hyperlight, you want to bring that amount a little bit down, right about there, should be enough. Next stop, uh, Global Illumination. Now uh, you want to pick one of your uh, spotlights, turn it on, and uh, GI amount, bring it up a little bit. For our case, this should be uh, enough. Now uh, you can see the, the shadows coming from the spotlights uh, under the bed. Let's uh, adjust the fall-off speed a little bit and we're done with the, uh, with the global illumination. Next up we have depth of field. Now let's turn on the autofocus to help us measure the distance of our main object. In uh, our case, uh, the group of people. Now let's see. We have 20 meters from the lens, so they're gonna be nice and sharp. Let's bring the amount of blur up. Now you can see the difference right away. The, the foreground is nicely blurred as well as, as the background. You, we want to keep the foreground and background slider somewhere in the middle so you get nice even distribu distribution of blur of the foreground as well as the background, as you can see right, right in here. So uh, we're done with the depth of field. Moving on to uh, two-point perspective. As you can see, the, we're using quite a wide-angle lens, 15 mil, which means the, the edges of the pictures, uh, the vertical lines will not be exactly vertical. So uh, you want to turn the uh, two-point perspective on all the way 100%. And now we have nice vertical lines in the picture. Next, we already worked on the chromatic aberrations, sky and cloud. Now let's bring down the, the high cloud. We're not looking for those today. We're looking for uh, low clouds. So uh, let's slide it up a little bit. Uh, amount of clouds and the positioning. Let's see. I think we want a little bit more, more of the clouds, something, something like, like that. Let's just position it right. Well, I think that is better. Now let's bring the, the brightness up and the sky brightness down. Now you can see how it is changing the contrast in between uh, the clouds and the sky as well as the shadows. You get more, I mean, uh, deeper shadows when you bring the, the brightness of the, of the sky down. I think we want to bring it down just a little bit more. Somewhere around there. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Now moving on to color correction. As I mentioned before, we lost a little bit of color when we were working with the shadows and now we're gonna get it back. So let's move the saturation up and uh, vibrance as well. And now you can see the, the colors popping up again. Let's move the temperature up as well to get a nice warm feel to the picture. That's what you would normally get with these kind of shots late afternoon, early evening, with a nice, warm, warm sun. Uh, let's move the contrast up as well. Right about there. And we done in this section, just quickly move back to, to the sun, adjust the height a little bit. It's a little too much sun shining on the house. I want it somewhere, somewhere over there. Yeah, that is looking a little better. And that's done over there. And next up, exposure. Let's just bring down the overall exposure just a little bit. And that looks, looks pretty good. And now, what are we missing? Oh, the last thing, volumetric sunlight. 
let's turn it back on you can see there's a lot of it in there so we need to bring down the brightness this is quite tricky to work with this one even though you use a shift key which gives you more control over over the brightness still it's not easy to adjust so you need to be really careful find the, the perfect amount well that's not enough there you go a little more and that should that should do it so once again thanks for watching stay well and stay creative